So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. I've got a pretty interesting project lined up for today. I think most of you guys might find this helpful. What we're looking at is a white oak, and this log has been on the ground for two years. It was dead standing for about one year before they took it down. It looks pretty rough. It's about eight feet long. The diameter on the large end is 36 inches. And even though it looks pretty bad on the outside right there, there's still a lot of good wood left in it. Now this size log, I could handle just fine with the Super 70 and the 754 would have no problems taking it up there to the mill. But last week I had a Patreon member reach out to me and they asked a question. They wanted to know what to do about logs that are way too big for their sawmill. And chickens, I'm trying to record over here. Man, these chickens are loud today. So he's got a LT15 and he's got a log that's plus 40 inches and he can't get it on the sawmill. So guys, even though this log would be no problem for the Super 70, I'm gonna show you what I would do if I had a log way too big for my sawmill. My strategy today is gonna to be getting a ripping chain on one of my chainsaws and coming down through here with a plunge cut and hopefully splitting this wide oak wide open. But we do have a few potential problems. Problem number one, the pith is off center on both ends. If it was straight, this might split a whole lot easier. Another problem is, not only has the log been laying here for two years, it was dead standing for over a year, so a lot of the moisture has left it. That's gonna make it pretty hard, and it may be a lot more difficult to split it. Another problem would be the hatefulest cat on YouTube has joined us. Mama, what do you think about it? And if you're wondering why I spray painted this line down the middle, you girls mind, I'm trying to make a video over here. Goodness sakes alive. So the reason I put this on here is just a guide. So when I plunge my chainsaw and I start walking backwards, it gets me somewhere to reference from. But guys, I've not done this in about four years and it's a lot of hard work. You gotta have a sledgehammer, some wedges. I even have a little, uh, hand powered hydraulic kind of a reverse crimper, I guess you would call it. I'm not sure what you call it. I can drop it in there if I can't get it split open, but this is a lot of work, but if you want it bad enough, you can get it done. Let's go grab the chainsaw and put on a ripping chain and get to work. I tell you what, this saw right here is heavy. We're gonna use the MS-880 today. This is the biggest steel that I think they make. It's 120 cc's and the bar I have on it is 36 inches. This is a powerful saw, but man, it's heavy. And very important friends, if you're going to bust open a log by ripping it with the grain, you don't want to use a standard chain. You want a ripping chain. I got this from Bailey's online. It's a Woodland Pro. I've never used their ripping chains before. They say they're pretty good though. That may be the wrong size. It is the wrong size. We go grab the right one. All right, I'm back. This right here should fit it. It's a 404 chain, 108 lengths. But the only thing I'm worried about, it says it's for a Lucas mill. I'm assuming a Lucas mill must use a 404 bar. We're gonna put it on here though and see how it does. If this does not work, I do have a ripping chain for my 461. y'all being so loud about over here? I think they're pretty happy today, guys, because I put a metal roof over the extension part of the chicken run. Now they're totally in the dry. And to all those people out there that tell you, get chickens, they're cheap, they're fun. You'll have a lot of fun with them, free eggs. Guys, chickens are expensive.
Well, it's a cracking, guys. Y'all hear it? friends it is the next day after i got that log split open i had a bunch of yard work to do then bruno had a book fair at school so i got tied up for the rest of the day so right here today we're going to finish up that log and put it on the sawmill but before we do that i got some white pine i forgot was even up here we're cutting these into one by sixes if i remember right this was last week when i had this on here yes one by sixes i got two cans we'll blow through these pretty fast and move on and uh, that's what I was gonna do with this. I couldn't even remember. This is gonna be siding for the chicken house. I need siding boards for the front and one side of it to finish that project up finally. We'll get this done real fast and we'll bring this white oak up here and see how it looks. And for you guys out there that are interested, that took me about two hours to bust open that log, but that includes going in the house and eating lunch. So probably about an hour and if it was green, it would have took less time than that. Those drier logs are harder to split. For you guys that have a smaller sawmill out there, and even if you have a 70 and you get in a log, it's like 50 inches, that's a good way to get it sized down so you can put it on your meal. And a lot of people also could saw up something that size, but maybe they have a smaller tractor. And that's another good way of getting a log to your sawmill safely and not breaking your front end loader because logs are heavy. So all you need is some wedges, a good axe, a sledgehammer, a ripping chain for your chainsaw, and about an hour of time, and you can skip going to the gym because it is a lot of work, but I kind of enjoy it. It's a good way to spend an afternoon. Let's finish up this pine, then we'll bring those up here and see how they look. I think they're gonna be some pretty good logs.
there's actually two lessons in this video when dealing with logs too big for your sawmill. The first lesson was bust it down the middle. We got that covered pretty good. But this side right here, friends, is gonna be lesson number two. I'm gonna bring the camera over here and show you guys what I'm talking about. Whenever you split a log like this, you gotta clean up this face. All this open grain right here on the wood and these fibers, and this is where the log was split, of course, and look at it, it looks terrible. Some of it looks like firewood. You have to go back over this with your sawmill at some point while you're processing this log and clean this up and make it nice and flat again with your blade. If you don't do that, and let's say I come straight down through here sawing one inch boards and I left this jagged the way it is right now, you would have a lot of drying defects, friends. There's too many fibers sticking out. There's too many chances for drying problems to happen with something like this. It's almost like firewood. Whenever I was splitting this log up yesterday, there was a lot of ants that came out of that hole right there. Maybe they've all gone, but probably not. They're probably deep down inside the log. On the sawmill, we've got a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want those blades, friends, give him a phone call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. We're gonna do five quarter boards on this log. Five quarter. If you're new to this channel, that's an inch and a quarter on the thickness. I like to do my white oak a little bit thicker because a lot of people like true one inch boards after it runs through the kiln and also through a motor or a planer. So let's open this one up, friends, and see what's hiding inside of it. It's been waiting a long time on me to saw it up. It's been on the ground two years and over a year dead standing. So this log is ready to show itself. Well, it was climatic, wasn't it? It's ready to show itself. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, I'm just gonna shut up and saw this log up. Ready to show itself. My goodness. Hang in there guys, let's see what it looks like. 